Hi everyone, so today I'm going to share with you one of my all-time top pro tips is some that I do on all of my clients, whether they're doing red carpet, whether they are going on television, whatever they're doing, this is something that I do every time I do a professional makeup. Now, it's something that is not that hard to do, that's why I wanna share it with you, and it's something that is quick and easy to do as well. So, it's kind of like, I guess the philosophy would be, in the words of Coco Chanel, that used to say, put on all of your clothes for the day and then take one thing off. It's exactly the same philosophy, but instead of taking one thing off, I'm taking a bit of everything off. Um, so what I like to do is, for me, having brushes or at least a brush, which is there to remove makeup, is as important as the brushes that I have that put the makeup on. So whether it be eyes, whether it be face, it doesn't matter what it is. I will always have my brushes set aside that are my brushes that are my final blend and that remove a little bit of the makeup just to give the makeup that really seamless professional quality. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean now and how I like to do this technique. So I'm going to first show you it with base. So depending on what product you use, I feel like if I'm using my tint, it's not the perfect product to show this with because it is very thin and it's very blendable. But having said that, sometimes when I watch just some scrolling through Instagram or I'm just looking on social media and I'm watching people do their makeup and I just see the amount of makeup that goes on faces, I'm very often quite shocked. I'm thinking, wow, I wouldn't use that much makeup even if I was getting someone ready to go in front of a, a bank of a thousand paparazzi flash bulbs because it seems excessive. So I'm gonna give you the tips anyway. So depending on what you use, cause you might know yourself to be a bit heavy handed with makeup. It's very easy to become that by the way, cause you just start, you know, putting it on and there's not always the time to kind of take it easy in a way. So I'll probably use, I'll probably use my base actually. I think it'll demonstrate a little bit better what I'm trying to say. So if I was to do my base and kind of put it all over, I mean, I tend to like thin layers anyway, but say I'm getting somebody ready for a red carpet or something like that. So I'm putting on, you know, a good couple of pumps. So I've done a full face of base. I haven't gone too heavy, so I find it hard to kind of do overly heavy makeup, but doesn't matter who I'm doing, I'll put the makeup all over and then I'll take a clean brush. I wanna show you like the different types of brushes that I use for this. My philosophy is the brushes that put the makeup on are as important as the brushes that take the makeup off. And what I mean by that is a clean brush, once you say done your base, that just goes all around the edge, into the hairline, maybe onto the ears, little bit around the jawline, kind of just blending onto the neck. It's not an application of makeup, it's a kind of taking off of makeup and a, a spreading. And you can only really do this successfully with a clean brush. So something like this is perfect for it. I mean, artist brushes, they're expensive, but they're perfect for it. Any kind of, this is like a Sigma, brush for something or other but anything like that if you just want to kind of you know just those edges maybe it's the way your foundation kind of sits around your brow that you can't quite get it to look really seamless so something like that is really really helpful just for making makeup look professional and feel and behave in a way that it looks just so beautifully done um, and natural as well, even if you're doing a really full-on makeup. And I do this if I'm doing somebody like for a full-on TV appearance or anything, you want that to look really nice. So it's like a security buff, a security buff all over. Okay, next we're gonna do a cream blush to show you how this can also work. Cause you might do a cream blush and be like, yeah, that looks really good. This one blends too nicely, but in general, sometimes you can get a bit stuck on them. buffing around the edge with the clean brush. It's now got a tiny bit of foundation on, so that's even better. It's got hardly anything on though, again. 
it's going to kind of remain pretty clean towards the end of the makeup. So a nice dense synthetic brush is the best thing to do with. So if you're not really a brush person, you tend to use fingers or sponges to apply your makeup. This can still work because even if you're applying everything with fingers, a clean brush just to remove and to smooth at the end, honestly, will really up your makeup game. If you are someone that just likes sponges, then just apply exactly the same technique. So just have a clean sponge. So use your sponge to apply your foundation, your concealer, whatever it is you normally do, then have a clean version of the same brush, uh, sorry, the same sponge that you only use for blending, smoothing, and just removing that last little bit as well. So I'm gonna go straight into under eye concealer now. So say I've applied it, like I actually do like to apply my under eye concealer with a sponge. So this is something that I would use just to kind of push it into the skin, make sure it's not too heavy. But then I would definitely still go back in with a buffing brush of some description just to take off those edges. Maybe I'll use the smaller one, but I would use that to make sure that that is almost feathered the end of it into the blush or the highlight or the foundation or anything else that I've used so that we are getting again just this absolutely smooth seamless blend everywhere and again my brush is not getting dirty yet either this also works brilliantly when you're doing your eyeshadow so I'm just going to show you kind of going to put my eyeshadow on and then just show you the difference between a kind of finished eyeshadow and one that's had a really good buff with a clean brush at the end. It might not even pick up on camera, but in real life, it is the difference between a good makeup and a really good professional looking makeup. Because that's a reasonably well applied, I haven't finished yet, but I'm just gonna show you how like going in with a brush a clean brush, you could use a completely clean one, obviously. Just keep a clean eyeshadow brush that you don't use to apply with. But I'm gonna actually use the same brush just to show you. The fact that it's got a little bit of blush on is actually really handy. Not that it's much, but kind of brings the whole face together. And you can see, just going over with this clean brush just makes everything blend amazingly. Just doing the other eye. Obviously, because it tones it down, you can add a bit more, but at least you know that your base is so well blended. So now if I wanted to go back in and add a little bit more, at least I know that my edges like is so seamlessly and beautifully blended. And then as you add more, like if you start doing a stronger socket line and you want to go back in, just take your brush again and you just blend. Another place a clean brush is really good is when you're doing a line underneath your eyes. So if you're doing like a smoky eye or you're doing anything basically which involves creating kind of shadow or color underneath your eyes, you can't use the same big brush that you've used for your face, but I always really, really go in once it's kind of finished the makeup and just take that clean brush along. It just helps to kind of soften that edge so I've just done my mascara, my brows and my lips. So in terms of clean brushes for those things, of course, if you're using especially a really volumizing mascara, then a clean spoolie is always a must. Likewise, if you feel like you've got too much eyebrow pencil on, again, going through with a really clean spoolie will really help. For lips, sometimes if you've got too much, I put a bit of gloss on, you've got too much, I'll often, or too much lipstick, I'll often go in with a clean, lip brush right at the end just to go all over. I'll either use like a little a small eye brush or just a completely clean lip brush just to pick up if I feel like there's just a bit too much product on there. So that is the finished look. End up doing a bit of a purpley eyeshadow, bit of a spring vibes here. But yeah, honestly, this tip about clean brushes, you can use tatty old brushes, ones that you don't even use that much. Brushes which are really inexpensive, 
anything that you can have on hand that you just don't really put a lot of makeup on. So whether it be a big buffer like that, just to really smooth out base and base products, whether it is something like this one, which I kind of used everywhere, which I'm actually gonna use now to do my powder as well. So this has been used throughout the whole makeup at every, well, I've used it on eyes, I've used it on everything apart from my lips really to blend. And it still actually doesn't look like it's been used very much. I used that for, I used it for cream blush, powder blush, eyeshadow blending, um, my foundation, my concealer, and now I'm using it for powder. But just really ensuring that everything is blended. So it's not about having a brush that puts makeup on, but brushes that take makeup off. Blend and take makeup off. They are equally as important in my book. Hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you do have any brushes that you use exactly for this purpose and I'll see you soon.